All right, welcome to a Friday Reads, where I'm going to talk about what I've read, what I'm reading, and I'm not actually going to talk about what I'm going to read next, but I'll, I'll explain that at the end of the video. And I have a mini library haul, but I'm not going to do my book haul, because next week, I think instead of a Friday Reads, I'm going to do a book haul, because again, I will explain <laughs> at the end of the video. Life's just a little chaotic, but we're still going to have fun content, and let's get into it, because I have finished one, two, three, four, five things, chose to DNF a thing, and I'm in the middle of a thing right now. I, I told you guys at the beginning of the month, I have reading goals. This is not normal. If this is your first video of mine, this is not my normal reading speed. Well, it's, my reading speed's been the same, but I've been putting aside more time for reading than I typically do because of my mood to be challenging myself this month and getting through the books I own before my move. So first thing I finished, and I'm not going to go into detail because I'm going to make a standalone review because I like it enough. And I was looking and I didn't see a standalone review for it yet. And I'm like, I know it's going to be popular, but I just want to have my thoughts out there, and that's Kaikei, which I am trying to say correctly, but I'm not very good at Hindu words, so I really apologize if it's not 100% correct. But this book's awesome. Going to make a review for it. I finished it, like when I said I would last week. I also finished and started Children of Time. Oh, what to say about this? I still have to finish up my spoiler vlog for my patrons, but I really liked it. I think it's an interesting thought experiment on what happens if an arachnid can evolve at a very fast speed throughout generations. What does their society look like? What are the different things and challenges they would deal with? And then comparing that to what are the challenges of the human race as they are trying to find a new home in space and kind of having these stories in parallel and seeing what happens when they intersect. I think I don't agree with every point of the thought experiment and there were definitely times where the story was way drier than it needed to be. Um, like if I didn't have the audiobook, which I did cave, and get an audible trial so I can have this audiobook. I think I would have had more issues with the pacing without the audiobook really driving it forward because there were sections I think that were pretty slow in their pacing where we're just really observing things without really any engagement with characters or plot or stuff. That said, I was way more connected to our cast of characters than I thought we would be because when I've heard of this book I knew it was one of those generational science fiction so similar to maybe Foundation or something like that where it's more about following the society than it was following an individual person. That said, there were still people and names and pe thing ideas that I was very connected to as the story progressed throughout all of these thousands of years. So I, I, I was actually really pleasantly surprised there. I don't know if this is a four or four and a half star. I guess you'll have to wait to the end of the month if that really matters. I generally had a really good time with it. I don't know if I had a good enough time with it that I want to read Children of Ruin. I don't know. I felt very much like this was a nice complete story and didn't feel the need for a sequel. And I don't know if that thought experiment is going to be different enough from this one to make me want to read it. I don't know if you've read Children of Ruin and you think that it's worth a read let me know. But I am glad that I finally read this. I think this was on like books I wanted to read in 2020 or something. Like it's been on my TBR for a really long time. So it's kind of cool to have that done. And then next we'll talk about a very, very good book. <laughs> and thank you to the person in my discord who told me to listen to the audiobook. I'm blanking on the name right now, especially since I'd like know people by their avatars and not their names. But I read and listened to Emergency Skin by N.K. Jemisin. This is one of like, this is actually the last prose by Jemison I had yet to read because I still have the Green Lantern graphic novel, but that's a graphic novel. So that's a different experience than reading prose. And it's a short story. It's in the like forward collection on Amazon and I've been saving it. And I actually was in some type of mood Saturday night and I was just like, I just want to spend an hour reading a Jemison. And that's what I did. And oh my goodness. <laughs> I mean, I didn't think she would let me down, but she did not let me down. It was so enjoyable. Um, the narrative structure is what I expect from her, where she really commits to a narrative framing. Um, like our main character, literally, we have like no engagement with them other than their interaction with this voice that I think of as like the voice in the game Portal or Portal 2, this like AI consciousness that's like really snarky and sassy and like really looks down at the person they're talking to. And it's very thematically strong commentary on what a society could be and what happens if you remove X factor from it. So I think honestly, I'm not 100% on this. Like I, you know, I'm not about to remake my whole Jemison guide, which I do have. This is not a bad place to start. If you were like, should I read N.K. Jemison? It's only 30 some pages. So that's, you know, half an hour to an hour of your time. The audiobook is phenomenal, but I mean, it would be great to physically read too. And I think it really shows her very strong authorial voice. It shows what she does with themes. Like 
she's sometimes very blatant about her theming and that's going to rub you some kind of way one way or another um she she has an agenda she wants to tell you about it and this is how she goes about it i think it's really similar to what you get in broken earth or even the city we became which i know not everyone who likes one likes the other but i do think her approach to themes is very similar in both of those personally some people might think the city we became is a more on the nose but this is definitely on the nose and it has weird narrative confusing framework and has really cool ideas so i just feel like this as a taste like i was hesitant to recommend how long till black future month as a taste for jemison because i didn't feel those short stories really represented what i had seen in her novels and this one i do think in a very small package can give you that oh it was so good I'm like trying so hard to get Ryan to listen to the audiobook of this, but he doesn't listen to audiobooks, but I'm just like, it's so good. Like it's, it's lo shorter than some podcasts we listen to, you know? So anyways, so I finished that. And then next up I finished, actually, I think I have it in the pile over here. The rest of these I, I hadn't had, but it's Infomocracy and I'm probably just going to put an image up anyways, Angela, because it's so shiny. <laughs> But Infomocracy was a journey. So I buddy read this with Shannon from That Sopo. And when we both started it, at first, it was kind of funny because we'd read last year Sunspot Jungle Volume 2 together, which is like a 500 plus page short story anthology. And she had no issues DNFing stories if they weren't working for her. And so I got very used to the type of story she would DNF. And I started this, got 70 pages in, checked in, and I'm like, you know, I won't be surprised if you DNF this. Like, it definitely has some things you don't like in stories, but it also is missing the elements you normally don't like in this type of story. And it was funny because she did say that if it wasn't for the buddy read, she probably would have DNF'd it, but it wasn't egregious enough. And then by the end of it, we both had a really good experience. It was a slow start for both of us because like we just didn't latch onto the characters right away. And the world building, we both agree, was really cool. And the ideas were cool. This idea that the world is now globally run by micro democracies. So every 10,000 people in a land is a sentinel. And every 10 years, there is a vote. And basically, the governments that have the most sentinels become like the super majority. And everything's run by information, which is I put in my head as like Google or something like that. And it's just a very different world, very kind of, I think, sort of cyberpunk. I'm not sure if it's cyberpunk, but there is a lot of integration of technology with the human experience. Like if you have information connected to you, you can look at something and know the average rating of it. There are different sections where it can have pop up ads like the world is really cool. The ideas are really interesting. But I will say it felt like an action movie, like an action spy noir ish type movie, but without the, the negatives that come with noir where we have like this James Bond, Sherlock Holmes, and I'm stealing from Shannon here because she made this connection of this one character who's like really awesome. Um, kind of like if you like Murderbot, you might like her. <laughs> I, she's a human and Murderbot's not a human, but they have similar things where they get socially anxious, but are really good at their job and like to escape into media. They have a lot of similar overlap in their characterization. And then we have another character who just really likes doing their job, but is never like I don't know, never brought into a higher role, never promoted appropriately, is taken advantage of. And they're both these people who like have strong ideals and are trying to uncover this conspiracy that's going on on the eve of this new election. And um, obviously things don't go well. <laughs> um, so it's a thriller for sure, but it's I don't think you're typically paced thriller because like I said it both took us about a hundred or so pages to be on board and then we were like having fun and we were in it and we were thinking of theories and starting to get connected to the characters and the situation and so I think it's one of those books that really does balance really strong grounded world building and thematic ideas with an intriguing plot and I wouldn't say the characters were the thing that shined the most, but I did come around to really liking them, loving the characters working together. And like there was a side character who didn't get as much page time as our main characters. I don't even think really got a point of view, maybe like one tiny point of view. And I instantly loved her. And I think she's going to be in the future books in this series. So I'm really excited. <laughs> So I'm not picking up the next books right away because this kind of ended kind of like an action movie with an open endings where you could explore more, but it's concluded enough and there's kind of sort of closure but open endedness to our characters because our characters are also going on their own personal journeys of like, am I fulfilled by what I do? Do I believe what I believe? So we really came around on it. We really both started off like, mm, is this going to be like a three, three and a half star? Like not bad, like a quality piece of work that we just don't care about because we were just really bored. Like we were really bored at the beginning, even though we objectively were like, these ideas are interesting. And we, we really came around on it. So that was really cool. Um, and then I finished Shadow of the Short Days. I've done it. I've had this book on my TBR since last March. Unfortunately, it wasn't a huge hit for me. 
I really liked the beginning. I think the, they're split into three parts. I think the first part was really strong. And then I just think it lost steam for me. I don't know. Objectively, things get weirder and more intense and the action picks up. But the slower paced section, the setup at the beginning, I really liked. I loved seeing this world, getting to know our characters before the plot started to really happen. Once the plot started to happen, I was less connected to my characters and their motivations in general. I didn't hate them. Like, I wasn't, like, active. Well, actually, no. There was one character who did a thing that I thought was just completely, like, irredeemable. So this kind of like pivoted into, into like a really grim dark book, which isn't bad, but it definitely is the part of grim dark, I think, where you just have really unlikable people that you are following. And that's kind of what happened here. And there's a revolution and revolution plots have to be really good for me, um, mainly because I think I'm burnt out of them. It's like a standard fantasy plot is to put in a revolution. Same with sci-fi. So they have to have something else to them. And this one was unique in that it's more modern, that we're using um, printing presses, we're using protests, like we're really getting the people together. It's about getting the community to, you know, fight against the system. But also there's just like weird magic going on that was cool and disturbing, like really disturbing stuff happens. But it's just, I think this was too bloated. I think it was too long. It wasn't poorly written. Um, I didn't really have too much of an issue with all of the Icelandic words and things like that. But like by the last 150 pages, I was ready for it to be done. <laughs> I was I was really ready for it to be done. I forced myself to spend my entire afternoon finishing it because I just wanted it to be done. And at no point did I get just completely immersed and was just like, yes, let's finish this. I need to know what happens next. And that's what the end of a book should be like in my opinion, like you should care that it's ending or maybe not want it to end, but I just I wanted it to be done. I'm actually okay with how the ending happened. Like I actually don't have issues with the actual content of the ending, but yeah, I, this, this ended up being a good book for me, but not as good as I wanted it to be based off, I think the strong start, this really cool world. I don't know. It was, yeah, there was some disconnect here. And I think part of it was the characters became extremely unlikable. And then the actual intrigue was revolution and that's not very intriguing to me there were no other mysteries here like the big bad's the empire of course it's the empire it's always the empire like i don't know and of course the demons are being demons judith got really liked when i said that but yeah like i don't know it's just there was nothing particularly surprising to me here even when our characters did thing that i was like oh that's not normally what our main characters do because then my brain was already in grim dark setting and in a grim dark book people do questionable things people are morally gray to morally just black like that just happens so yeah, it was good. I would recommend to people who do like revolution stories, who do like grim dark things, who do like unlikable characters. I think those things are actually done well here. This was just a disconnect for me and what I wanted from the story. I think I just like to like my characters more than these ones. And like one of the main point of views is just like, did not like a thing he did. And pretty much from that moment on, I wasn't liking the book as much. So, all right. And now a thing I'm still in the middle of, or should I talk about the DNF? I'll talk about the DNF first. I am DNFing the Justice of Kings, mainly because after finishing The Shadow of the Short Days, I'm like, I cannot force myself to read another, like maybe three star book with characters I don't care about and a plot that I don't care about. Because when I made my TBR in April, I was like, The Justice of Kings, I know going into it is a low magic, kind of grim dark-ish setting, and it's gonna be a murder mystery plot. And none of those things are my buzzwords. Actually, a lot of those things I actively avoid when I pick up books to read. and. I was like, but everyone's giving it such high ratings. Maybe the writing is just going to work so well for me. Maybe I'm just going to love these characters. And if I love the characters in a writing, I will be good with anything. And I gave this 45% and I'm actually really angry with the characters a lot of the time. So I think, I think it's time to cut my losses here. <laughs> I, I do think that if you read this, you'll know right away if it's going to work for you or not, essentially. I just... I don't like Helena. I'm not, I'm not saying that the characterization of her is bad. I just don't like her. I don't like her. She does things that make no sense to me. And that doesn't mean she's not real. There are plenty of people in the real world that do things that don't make sense to me, but I don't want to spend hundreds of pages with those people either, you know? Like, yeah, she just, she didn't make any sense to me. I was hoping it would have more Lady Trent vibes and it really didn't. So if you were hoping for Lady Trent vibes, no, no, that's not here. And then like our wise mentor character is kind of like, not that smart, or at least not listening to reason. He's being a little stubborn. And I'm not saying again that that's bad characterization, but it's annoying. <laughs> and then add on to the other things that I don't love in my fantasy, like they just are not my tropes. Yeah, it's not a thing. So 
that's all the reading. I'm still reading Children of the New World. This has still been great. We're this far in now. We've read quite a few stories since I last checked in with you. Let me see if there are any that I feel like mentioning. I like the excerpts um, from the New World Authorized Dictionary, um, mainly because I just think it's a cool way of like being like, this is potentially near future. Here are all of our new like lexicon words. I think that's really cool. Um, let's see. Children of the New World was kind of harrowing. That was a world where you go into a simulation and you can like basically live a life in there. And so people could have children in there who could not have children outside of the simulation, but viruses can exist and they lost their children. It was, oh, it was something. Um, and then recently we read Fall Line, which I, I liked. It was, <laughs> it was my definition of what a short story should be sometimes, which is this idea should probably not take place for 300 pages because that's too long, but let's explore it here. And this is like a climate sci-fi short story where everything's really warm, so we don't have skiing anymore. So we're following the life of an ex-extreme skier who fell out of skiing because of an accident and used to have jobs at ski slopes, but now they're closing down and like just his life for 30 minutes, which I think is the appropriate amount of time to spend on that topic. And I found it well written. Like that's the thing. Um, there's only one story in here I haven't liked and that's not because it wasn't well written. It was because of the project of that short story which was to be an academic article and I'm like I hate reading academic articles. I have very strong opinions for the prose we use in academic articles. I'm in the minority in thinking that way but yes. And um, I'll show you guys my mini library haul real quick. I don't know when I'll read these but I wanted them and sometimes it gives me the same serotonin as buying books without buying books. So I got 36 Streets, which I talked about in my February releases roundup video. Recently, um, my friend read this and reviewed it. So I'll link that down below. And it just got me even more excited to read this book, and especially after Infomocracy. Like I'm not against reading this type of sci-fi some more, like really urban city based with like integrated technology. Really cool. And I really don't know when I'm reading this. Now that I've DNF Justice of Kings, maybe I'll get to it sooner. We'll see because I don't the audiobook has Michael Kramer, and I know this is blasphemy, but I don't like Michael Kramer as an audiobook narrator, and it's not because of Wheel of Time. I've listened to him for Stormlight. He just has a voice that I don't like to listen to, and it's not his fault. You know, you can't change who you're, what your voice is, but I don't love it for audiobooks. But that's The Grace of Kings, I guess, getting to the book. His book is so big. <laughs> it's actually not, like, that big. Like, you look at that book, you think, what, 700, 800 pages? It's only 600. Like, this is only 620 pages, but it's it looks huge. So we'll see. It's mainly I don't want to rush reading this in this month of like a reading challenge. But if it ends up being a book that I really want to keep reading, then I'll pick it up and read this because I would like to make my friends book club. Like we have a, a friend, a book club we do at Space Sirens and they're doing Grace of Kings this month. So I would like to, but I don't know if it's going to happen. And so the reason why I'm not going to talk about the books I'm going to read next, besides the fact that this video is already probably way too long for a variety of reads, is it's the start of Tor.comathon today. And I'll have linked down below some graphics Bethany's put together. She, we have reading sprints happening. Mine's on Monday, officially decided Monday evening, Eastern to Standard Time or Daylight Time, whatever time we're in now is when I'll be hosting sprints. And I'm going to vlog that. So I'm going to, when I finish this video, start a different video where I go over my TBR for that and vlog that for a week. And we'll see how I do. So you can expect that not next week but the following week. And so next week, my Friday reads will probably be a book haul and a mini unhaul as I like have been going through books on my TBR. So that's what you can expect from me. I am going out of town for a week, so I'm trying to pre-film, but I'm also like not forcing myself to film if I don't want to. Mental health has just been everywhere. So I do what I can, but that's the type of content you can expect in the near future. And I hope you like this video. How is your readathon month been going? I'm doing great. I think I've almost gotten everything I want done for the magical readathon. I'm still doing well for Realmathon. The next one is Tor.comathon, and that's the next challenge. And I'm excited to get those books off my TBR. A lot of them I'm really interested in. One of them does intimidate me, which is okay, because I now need to fill that prompt for Justice of Kings, so that's fine. Um, but yeah, let me know what you're reading, doing, watching. I will not get into this, but I have actually started Bridgerton, and I like it. But I went into it wanting a bingeable romance drama, so I feel like that's exactly what that show delivers. But if you want to leave an emoji, um... I don't know. Leave a moon because there's a moon on Shadow of the Short Days, which I do like this title because it takes place in Iceland and it's in the winter of Iceland, which if you know Iceland and how the sun works, they have very long winter, like days. Well, they have long nights during the winters in Iceland. So we'll do a moon. And otherwise, like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.